Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the stream. I appreciate you all joining me tonight. It is Tuesday night, so we are going to play three rounds of Old School Magic 
here on stream. <clears throat> it is July 27th. First thing that we need to do, though, of course, is that uh, we need to uh, choose the color for the uh, frame around my picture. So <clears throat> let's bring up the wheel and let's uh, go ahead and spin it and see what we got uh, or not, because now it doesn't want to do it. Well, that's sad. So, uh, okay, so I guess we'll just, uh, we'll go with uh, gray instead of uh, gold and uh, we will double check to see if maybe we can spin that wheel later on. Appreciate everybody here being here. Again, this is my regular scheduled stream. We play three rounds of old school magic every Tuesday night. Now, <clears throat> taking a look at tonight's deck, if you follow me on Instagram or um, in my Discord, you may know uh, what's going on. So I have a birthday coming up this weekend, so I put this deck together called Birthday Bash. I'm going to be 45 years old, so I figured that I would put all of the old school 4-5s in that can attack. Uh, so no, no Cardivorous Plant, but we do have Juzon, I'm uh, sorry, not Juzon, <clears throat> Uh And then... Uh, Jasper and Earth Elemental. So uh, those are the four fives, and uh, they can attack. And then uh, the Darylor is a four four, so four four to represent uh, the end of my forty fourth year. Um, and Serendipifrit because I really like it. And then uh, Bolts, and then uh, uh, Disenchant, a uh, <clears throat> Divine Offering, um, Demonic Tutor, uh, two Swords of Plowshares, two Berserks that goes with the Bash theme, turning things sideways to Bash. Uh, so uh, Ancestral Recall, Time Walk, one copy of Sylvan Library, one Regrowth, two Ice Storms, and then uh, four Mana Birds and a bunch of Mana Sources. Um, out of the sideboard tonight, we've got uh, quite, uh, quite a variety. Two Blue Blasts, two Red Blasts, one Armageddon, two Good Cardinal Crossroads, uh, one Falling Star, two Spirit Links, a Disenchant, a Hercules Recall, an Icy Manipulator, and two copies of Crumble. So... Looking forward to uh, playing this on the stream tonight. Again, this is called Birthday Bash, and uh, it is on our in honor of my 45th birthday, which is coming up this weekend. So I appreciate everybody who is here. Uh, again, my regularly scheduled stream, I play three rounds of Old School Magic every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, three rounds of Magic with the Northern Paladins. So uh, uh, thank you for stopping by, and I'm hoping that uh, you do enjoy the show. If you want some more information regarding Paladin Magic, the Northern Paladins, uh, the uh, Tuesday Night Gauntlet, or even at the Alpha 40 League um, that we sometimes have here on stream, head on over to northernpaladins.com. The link is in the chat right now. Uh, general gist of Paladin Magic is you take uh, the most broken stuff in uh, old school is still obviously restricted. Uh, then uh, we banned Mind Twist, Library of Alexandria, and Strip Mind, and then restricted Mistress Factory, Mistress Workshop, the Tabernacle at Pendrel Vale, and Maze of Is. So <clears throat> that's where we've got uh, um, for Paladin Magic, and we are uh, look. Oh, look at that! Our color chooser is back up. So uh, let's uh, let's see if we can uh, activate our color chooser this time. There we go. Here we go. Round and round she goes. All right, and it is going to green. All right, so we will turn off the color chooser, and we will turn our frame to green. Seems okay. All right, so let's turn off the gray and turn on the green, and we are just waiting our uh, first round pairings. So uh, let's, uh, I'm not sure what's going on. Um, MTG Melee is not staying connected. All right. And we have uh, an opponent, so uh, we should be getting ready to have uh, our opponent uh, come up on the stream. Uh, we are looking forward to to that. So uh, once again, let's uh, take a look at uh, what we are running today. Um, and if you want to, you can uh, join my Discord. Round timer started. And uh, you can actually uh, take a look at my deck early. Um, I, I post it uh, normally before the events, so, uh, um, yeah, so, uh, our opponent is going to be, uh, Bruins, so, uh, we're going to, uh, be happy to, uh, bring, uh, Bruins onto the stream today as soon as he is ready, and it looks like he is, uh, ready now, so let's bring Bruins in. Good afternoon, good evening, sir, how are you? Doing good. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um, so uh, let's uh, throw your name up there. And 
and so there we go turn it on so <clears throat> So I got uh, a fun one today. It's got some fun cards in it. Um, wasn't sure if you got to look at the deck list yet, because I know that you are part of my Discord. I know you don't normally look early, but... Uh, um, yeah, not the deck list. I did see the teaser, sort of. Mm -hmm. uh, caffeinated in chat says he's loving the deck this week. Uh, stream, stream Scribe, thank you very much for joining me. For those who are not aware, uh, the Stream Scribe does, in fact, uh, stream... Um, as well and uh, you can uh, there's a link to his stream in the chat right now and you can see actually in the upper right hand corner he does uh, some uh, lettering and some uh, graphic art it's uh, really really cool so hop on over to uh, the stream scribe uh, and uh, give him a follow and uh, you can uh, watch some uh, really cool things happen uh, he and I've been friends since high school so <coughs> stream scribe telling me to shut up and play uh, his work is definitely beautiful. Uh, caffeinated, uh, definitely. Uh, he, he does some some excellent work. Um, our friend uh, Antrox, actually, his logo was designed by the stream the stream scribe. Um, the stream scribe has also done uh, some things for me as well. So uh, definitely uh, check him out. Check out uh, what he's got. And if you are in uh, the Syracuse uh, area, the stream scribe has a local business. So uh, um, definitely worth checking out. So. <clears throat> Just do whatever, man. I know you're not going to do anything wrong. All right, we're going to pull out the famous orange die. Do you want to choose even or odd? A little odd. Odd. It is odd. It is a five. All right, so it's on you. I will be on the play. All right. Good luck. Thank you. So your other half watching us play. Yep, there we go. How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. <laughs> I will keep. I will keep. Lions are turn. Ruby. Uh, winter orb. Winter orb. Okay. Sure. Alright, I will draw. I will play a taiga. Birds of paradise. And a Mox Jet, and I will say go. The little one, thanks for joining, man. He says he's exceedingly jealous of my Juzon playmat. Uh, yeah, I got this off Amazon. So, uh, uh, got it a while back. <clears throat> Eight tog. Okay. Good. Untap. Draw. Uh, I'm gonna tap for a green for a birds. I'm gonna tap for a green for a birds. I'm gonna play a taiga. And I'm gonna bolt your Atok. And you can go. Two cards left. All the mana. Alright, so I will untap one bird and one taiga, and I will draw. I will play a Mistress Factory, and then I will cast a Urnumjin. And you can go. Right, another eight tog. Good. All right, so I will untap everything because I only had one land tapped. I will give your eight tog the forest walk, and I will draw. <clears throat> I will cast a demonic tutor. All right. I will get every old schooler's favorite blue one mana instant. And I will cast it targeting myself. These birds put in work. Alright, so 
cast it targeting myself. Draw one, two, three. And I will bolt your ATOG. I'll select the ruby. Okay. And I will So let's see, it is currently a 3-4, and you can make it a, right, no, not 3-4, it yeah, it's a 3-4, it's taken 3 damage, huh? Um, <clears throat> I'll tap the white, I'm going to sort it. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so you gain 3, and then I will attack for 4. Bring you down to 19, and you can go. Thanks for joining the stream. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Untaps. We only have one land tap, so everything's going to come. And you have how many cards? Three. Three. Okay. I will draw for turn. I will activate my factory, and I'm going to attack for six. I will take six. At 13. <clears throat> And then I'm going to cast uh, Regrowth on the Ancestral Recall. All right. And you can go. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, and step. I will Ancestral myself. All right. One, two, Three. Uh, untap. And then I will draw. I will activate my factory. And I will attack with my Ermum in my factory. Okay. I'll take four. All right. Put you down to nine. And then uh, I will cast a Serendip of Freet. Savannah as my land for the turn. And you can go. Go ahead. All right. Untap. I'll take a point down to 19. I will draw. I will attack for seven. And I will say go. Okay. Go ahead. All right, untap. I'll take a point down to 18. I will draw. I will attack with both of my creatures. You got it. Alrighty. <laughs> People in chat are talking about city in a bottle. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I mean, he's playing Atog, so he could have city in a bottle in the main deck. I'm, I'm definitely assuming there's a city in a bottle in the sideboard, though. So... We shall see.
<laughs> you hope he plays four? That would be a lot. That would definitely be a lot. At the time you ran main deck Blood Moons, I ended up playing against Mono Black all tournament. Mana bases in old school are greedy, and no one wants to be too rude. I mean, I, you know, we're having fun on Tuesday nights. It's not, it's not like, uh, um, you know, it's a cutthroat tournament or whatever. Going to a uh, bigger events than uh, possibly uh, Blood Moon and uh, City in a Bottle might be cards that you would want. To, sorry, yeah, both of them you might want to play in uh, your main deck. <clears throat> This week's actually an experiment, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> First three weeks in Paladin were against Mono Black decks. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, the Mono Black deck is pretty strong. Um, as I said before, I am an advocate for restricting him to Torok and Paladin Magic. Um, it doesn't make it so that uh, Mono Black is not viable. It just uh, makes it so that the rack um, decks aren't viable. So... Uh, but, I mean, you can always go mono black with uh, weenie creatures um, and whatnot. So, I mean, get, getting rid of one archetype to make uh, another archetype stronger, I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. And, yeah, people might say, well, control decks uh, get a little bit weaker. But the control decks are actually running him to Torahawk, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, and it's not because Caffeinated likes to run uh, Team Bankai's. All right, you're gonna play first. Yep. All right, good luck, sir. I will keep. Are you keeping? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna mull again. Right. You were him five times last week. Uh, what normally happens is um, nobody casts him to Torok against me when I seem to have Psychic Purges in my sideboard. But easiest fix in the format, Ban Islands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but caffeinated, you run you run a lot of islands and a lot of blue cards in your deck, Team Bad Guy, because it's got Serendipity Freets, it's got uh, uh, Psyblasts. So uh, that, you might want to rethink that. <laughs> Plus power. I will keep. Alright. Um, yeah, we'll put that one underneath. Alright. See what you got. Plan for the turn. Ruby, Lotus, what Crack Lotus, you? Three, Green, Arnim. Arnim Jin. Okay, sounds good. Go ahead. Alright. I will draw. I will play Volcanic Island, Pearl, Lotus. Um, I'm going to sack the Lotus for green, white, red, Jasmine Boreal. 4 5, vanilla, legend. Go. <laughs> and now it's got forest. Well, Oh, for 
archer. Elvish archer, sure. I will take four. I'm at 16. Sure. All set? Go ahead. All right. Untap. Drop. Uh, attack for four. Forest walk. I will take four. Time walk. All right. Untap. Drop. Attack for four. Uh, I'm black. He can't. It's got four swaps still. Yep, yep, yep. I'll take the four. Mm hmm. And then. I'm going to cast a Chaos Orb and I'm going to say go. Ten. Go ahead. Untap. <clears throat> Draw. I'm gonna forest walk you for four. Okay. And I will say go. I'm going to activate my Chaos Orb. All right. We're going to use my Jasmine as your um, Urn Gym. And I missed. Ooh. That's a bummer. Um, all right. Then I'll Swords the Urn. And I'll take three. I'm at seven. Play Urn? Sure. Another archer, sure. Uh, swing seven. Cards in hand? One. I'll block an archer, and I'll take five. Uh, I'm at two. Go ahead. Draw. Not going to do it. Needed to hit that orb flip. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Seen a bit more of your deck now. Alrighty, so let's go into game number three. <sighs> Team Bad Guys was a protest deck originally. It was my proof of concept after Paladin Magic Mainings when I said there will always be the next most powerful card. I legit just crammed the most degenerate cards in the format into one deck. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I mean, 
Team Bad Guy is definitely a, a very, very strong, strong deck. Um, it doesn't lose very often. I mean, it can lose, obviously. Uh, you know, you're not perfect with it. I mean, you did uh, a lot of 3 and O's with, with the Team Bad Guy deck um, for a number of weeks. People adjusted. People were able to, uh, to get a win here and there. But, uh, uh, yeah, there's definitely going to be something else. If, if him to Turok is restricted, now I'm not saying that it needs to be banned. I'm saying that it needs to be restricted. That has always been what my stance has been, that uh, we restrict him to Turok. And I'm sure something else will, quote unquote, rise to the top. But, again, Paladin Magic isn't about, you know, uh, what can put up the, the most wins. So... But, uh, yeah, the fact that people talk about banning cards from, from the deck proves your point. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> you know, um, I would like to see uh, a restricted strip mine. Um, I, I think that, that that would be okay. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, having to rely on spells or your one Chaos Orb to deal with problematic lands is, is kind of blah. Yeah, people definitely uh, like to argue more about winning the spicy than than winning uh, Gauntlet Champion. It, yeah, that generally seems to be the case. Definitely. So. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I will play first. Good luck. I will keep. All right, so I'm going to go with a Taiga into a Birds of Paradise, and I will play a Mox Ruby, and I will say go. Yep. Four cards. I'm going to play a Mountain into a Soul Rune. Okay. Start an Aunt. Okay. And go ahead. Untap. Draw. I'll play a Badlands and take two. Okay. And then I will Demonic Tutor. Okay. And I will cast the Ancestral Recall. Your decks are kind of boring and uh, you win a fair bit. It's kind of lame. Yeah, I will just change your decks. Uh, you know, the thing is, though, that you built decks for your kids, too. And those decks seem to win fairly well. Twist is more powerful than Library of Alexandria. Absolutely. Um, it has actually been proven in Magic that um, subtracting something away from somebody is more detrimental to their game than you adding something to yours. So, all right. So, Ancestral, draw one, two, three, and I will say go. It's easier to win against an active library than it is to win when you have zero cards. <clears throat> forest, take two. Okay. Tap soul ring, play a second aunt. Okay. And I will pass the turn. Okay, untap, draw. I'll play another Birds of Paradise. Okay. And I will say go. That is an eight talk. Go ahead. Okay. Untap. Draw. I 
I'm going to cast a regrowth on the demonic tutor. And then I will cast the demonic tutor. Look back in my hand again. Okay. Cast a spirit link on your ATAR. Sounds good. And you can go. Go. Untap. Draw. Serendip of a freight. And you can go. <laughs> They're saying that I'm mean for tutoring um, and then casting the spirit link. <laughs> Part of it. Now, the damage and uh, life gain are simultaneous? No, it is a triggered ability. But, uh, like, right now you'd have to deal 18 damage to me in one shot to kill me. Fifteen. Play a forest and take four. Put you to fourteen. Alright, so give it plus six. Do you have two berserks? Giant growth. Giant growth. Okay. And berserks. Right. So okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that brings it up to twenty. And I stop four of it, so I take sixteen. Yep. That is the game. Well played, sir. Well played. <clears throat> <laughs> fireworks yeah definitely um, so um, I guess I could have decided not to get cute with uh, with my tutor I could have gone for a um, swords of plowshares instead but uh, you know live and learn uh, this deck kind of a, a trick in a sense uh, you know where I post my deck list at weekly um, yours, you post yours on Instagram. I actually didn't see what you did, so. You'll see it. <laughs> You'll be yeah, like, hey. I'll, I'll definitely see it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I made a point not to, not to look um, or to accidentally see it this time, so. so I'll, I'll give you a hint. The entire sideboard comes in mm -hmm. or out. Oh, okay. So it's transformational. All right. 
That that's good though. That's always fun. All right. Well, as always, thank you for the games, my friends, and uh, uh, thank you for uh, the support uh, that you give to the stream. I definitely appreciate it. Always, man. Good luck in the next one. Thanks. You too. Take care. All right. Well, we didn't get there, but that's okay. We had fun, and uh, I'm okay with losing to Bruins. So uh, this is the deck that we are playing today. This is my birthday bash deck. Uh, I'm calling it uh, the birthday bash deck because of the fact that uh, uh, my birthday is coming up. So I made sure that uh, I uh, had some cards that represent uh, that in the deck. So uh, I will be 45, hence the reason that I am playing the uh, four fives with uh, the Urnum Jin the uh, Jasmine Boreal, and the Earth Elementals. Um, and then uh, the one Daryl Orr is a 4-4 four, four to represent that uh, I uh, will no longer be 44. And then I like Serendipity Freets, and I like Lightning Bolts, and I like my Artist Proofs of Disenchant and uh, Divine Offering. So that's why they're in there. And then uh, the, uh, of course, the Berserk is uh, goes with the Bash theme of turning things sideways and casting a Berserk to bash my opponent. So, um, is Lightning Bolting a an opponent efficient? Like, is it a card that uh, one mana worth three damage as, as a rate, regardless of the game plan? I mean, it's really going to depend. Like, in that instance, obviously, um, him uh, playing Lightning Bolt on me uh, ends up uh, giving him the win. You know, I block, I, I soak up four of the damage, I still take 16 um, so uh, that lightning bolt obviously got me from 18 uh, down to 15, and then I take 16 for the win. So, uh, you know, um, it, it really, really depends um, on, on certain things. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously you don't want to play bolt as a sorcery and just go, well, turn one, I bolt your face, because then what happens if I play a, a creature that, that you can't deal with, or a mistress factory, or something along those lines? You might want to wait. Uh, um, the reason that the instants exist is because they could be played at any time. So the ideal time to play an instant is the last time that you can play an instant. Um, now, obviously, it's situational, but, uh, you know, so, for example, you don't want to play an instant as a sorcery if you don't have to when you have the entire opponent's turn in order to cast that, that instant. Uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes it makes more sense. Like, uh, for example, a turn one, if you're on the play, you go turn one, land, you don't cast Ancestral during your own turn because you have, you play the land, brings you down to six card of your Ancestral that, uh, that brings you from uh, five up to eight cards you don't have to discard. But you can always go Ancestral during the upkeep uh, on the first turn, bring you up to eight cards so that you don't have to discard, or Ancestral during their end step um, as well. So it's just, it's one of those things that uh, um, you just, you want to try to play the cards as efficiently as possible. And while the three damage is definitely an, an efficient um, way to spend the one mana, you don't want to just... Uh, you know, throw things at, at the opponents. Um, you know, obviously there are decks that, that want to do as much damage in as short a period of time as possible, but, you know, there might be something else that, and you want to take into account. You know, sometimes you don't want to, uh, uh, you want to just hold on to that lightning bolt for a couple of turns or whatever. Yeah, you have to do it seven times to kill someone, which I wonder if that's worthwhile. Yeah, I mean, obviously, but uh, I mean, if, if you're playing mono red, then then obviously you've got lightning bolt and chain lightnings. Now, when it comes to chain lightning, chain lightning is a sorcery, number one. And number two, the opponent has the ability to throw it back at you. Uh, so if they have uh, two red open, you want to make sure that uh, you don't cast, cast that uh, chain lightning when they have red open. Uh, another thing, too, is uh, sometimes people make the mistake of putting chain lightning in decks with blood moon. And why would you give the opponent the ability to throw the chain lightning back at you? Uh, part of uh, Blood Moon strategies is that you don't want your opponent to be able to do stuff and you don't want them to use their resources. So that's why things like Ankh of Mishra are good because you don't want them playing any of their basic lands. Um, and, uh, you know, you've got uh, things like uh, Black Vice and Copper Tablet when you play uh, a Blood Moon deck. So uh, Chain Lightning is just one of those cards that is counterproductive. Um, to your game plan because it allows them to do things and you don't want your opponent to do things if you're playing a blood moon deck lightning bolt is very very um, versatile it is a great removal card 
and uh, it is uh, really good. Obviously, it's second to uh, Swords of Plowshares when it comes to old school magic. Um, Swords of Plowshares being the best removal spell in old school magic. But people do forget the Chain Lightning drawback. And you know what? Uh, you know, they forget it when they cast it. They forget it when it's cast upon them. So um, instants are king, always, in, in old school magic or in magic in general. Um, if you have two cards that have the same effect, obviously an instant is better because of the fact that you can play it at any time. And being able to play something on the opponent's turn is definitely better than uh, having to only cast it on your own turn. Um, just like when um, Urza Saga came out, uh, Stroke of Genius is a blue and two colorless uh, and X. Target player draws X cards. I mean, Brain Geyser is blue, blue X. So Stroke of Genius is easier to cast because it only requires one blue mana. Um, you, you have to pay one more mana in order to use it, but it's at instant speed. So Stroke of Genius was absolutely ridiculous. I mean, you're also talking about a format that had, um, you know, that had uh, Telerian Academy, but, uh, you know, that, that's a thing. But, uh, yeah, um, instants are king, definitely so. If you have the ability to, to run an instant over a sorcery, then you run the instant over the sorcery, and you want to try to use the stack to your advantage and use the timing to your advantage. Because, you know, what what happens if I had a bolt and he has an ATOG? If I go turn one, I bolt you, and then he plays an ATOG, then all of a sudden I don't have anything to deal with the ATOG. Uh, you know, I'd much rather bolt the ATOG um, and then, uh, you know, make it so he either has to sacrifice an artifact so I still get the one for one, or uh, make it so they get rid of uh, the ATOG, which is a threat. So just one of those things. Um, so we are playing three rounds of Old School Magic tonight. Uh, don't touch that dial. I'll be back with some more Old School Magic. So please stick around. Welcome back, everybody. Got a kitty. Now, this one is Patrick. He's a bit older. He's uh, a few years old. Um, and uh, he is, uh, he looks a lot like our kitten Snickers. And uh, he's the uh, easiest one for me to catch. So, uh, did you catch the Lion Dib Burnt Mirror from Saturday minus the dibs? Well, I'm obviously I did because I was here um, doing the broadcast on it. Um, yeah, so uh, that was definitely uh, an excellent match. Uh, just wondering what uh, the thought process is for when Pez boarded out draw sevens for the mirror match. Uh, real simple. Uh, draw sevens uh, for the opponent are just as good as they are for you. So hence the reason to board them out. Bruins, thank you very much. A gentleman and a scholar there gifting five tier one subs to the community. Everybody, I definitely appreciate that. 
Uh, so anyway, uh, the draw sevens come out when uh, the opponents can take as much of advantage of them as you can. So when you have all of the uh, the burn spells in the opponent's deck, then that means that uh, you don't want the opponent to draw all of those uh, burn spells, especially, you know, in the situation where Pez uh, was taking more damage. You know, just Pez got some, uh, some pretty unfortunate, um, you know, was unfortunately on the receiving end of some bad, um, you know, some bad variants, and it happens, you know, is what it is. All right, so uh, he wants to go, so let me uh, uh, let him go, and I'll be back. Don't touch that dial. And here we're, we're back with Snickers. So uh, Snickers is making an appearance on the stream, saying hello to everybody. Say hi, hi Snickers. So Snickers went to the vet uh, for the first time, and uh, Snickers is in excellent health. So for finding him in a parking lot, he's in really good shape, and he goes back for a second round of shots in a couple of weeks, and then in two months. Just like uh, Bob Barker you used to say, make sure you get your pets spayed and neutered. I definitely support that as well. And Snickers was actually sleeping in my suitcase. I pulled out my suitcase because we are going away for the weekend. So Snickers, I didn't realize I left it unzipped. So Snickers was sleeping in my suitcase out in the other room. Say hi. Oh, all right. Um, I'll be back, everybody. <laughs> so uh, Snickers wants to be in here, but just doesn't want uh, to be up here with me. Uh, Snickers doesn't like to be like petted, really. I mean, sometimes, but very, very rarely. Uh, you know, he doesn't mind being held sometimes. It's just uh, one of those things. Uh, you know, and that's how some animals are. Uh, it is. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, but uh, he's actually trying to get back in. Um, I have locked the door so he can't come in. Um, I don't like the the animals in my game room unless you know it doesn't matter to me if I'm you know holding one of them or, or whatnot but um so uh this is my regularly scheduled stream we play three rounds of old school magic every tuesday night at 8 p.m eastern uh with the northern paladins as part of the tuesday night gauntlet so if you have not already done so uh please don't forget to follow turn on those notifications so that you know when i go live and if you have an amazon prime account link your twitch account to it that gives you twitch prime gaming and uh you can use that uh you get one free subscription to any channel that you want. So speaking of the uh, matchup from uh, the other day, uh, another Summer Derby matchup coming up on stream tomorrow. So uh, Seth and Jason, who have already been on the stream, um, will be playing against each other. Uh, for those who were not aware, uh, Jason is playing this uh, Troll Disco deck and dispatched Seth's teammate um, and... Uh, uh, 
Michael Scheffernecker. Uh, so the, the, he was playing basically the same deck that Seth is running. So uh, Jason already has a notch under his belt for uh, defeating this deck. Seth uh, is the one who uh, beat uh, Pez with this deck. So it is uh, going to be uh, pretty interesting. And we'll see if uh, these players can continue to run hot or not. And that is, again, going to be tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's 5 p.m. Pacific right here on my channel. So uh, one more um, match in the, the Final Fantasy Randomizer Duckling Derby. So uh, that is this Sunday night at 9 p.m. So uh, the first match, uh, the first race of the Duckling Derby on July 11th, I was doing extremely well going into the final dungeon and I crapped out in the final dungeon. So I ended up in 19th place. Um, I have a goal to be in 10th place or better at the end of the four weeks. So um, on July 18th in race number two, I uh, got 8th place. in, And then on this past Sunday, I got 7th place. So I am currently tied for 10th place. So I want to put up a strong showing so that I can get to that, uh, that top spot. Um, I think that uh, top 10 is respectable out of the 30 plus people who are running. Um, it is not easy to do. Um, now, Final Fantasy Randomizer is, uh, it's a game. Uh, obviously, uh, you take, you know, if you didn't know, uh, Final Fantasy is a game series. It started in, uh, uh, with the NES. Classic, uh, it's called, uh, the classic game is called just Final Fantasy. And uh, so, Final Fantasy Randomizer is a program that, uh, what it does is it speeds up the games and randomizes things within it. Um, this past weekend, it randomized the uh, floors and entrances to all of the dungeons. So if you go into even the, the very first uh, the first uh, castle uh, right by the beginning, and it wasn't the first castle. It was, you know, something different. And since the floors were shuffled as well, um, you could end up with a dungeon that was uh, uh, really long and had a bunch of floors that... Uh, uh, were from from different dungeons which was uh, what happened at the end of the race actually um, on Sunday this upcoming uh, weekend everything is going to be just uh, the items will be shuffled around um, and uh, there's going to be it's called two forced and it's to simulate a draft so uh, there'll be uh, two characters that you are forced to use and then you get to choose two again it simulates a, a draft so unlike booster draft well I mean very similar to booster drafting in uh, magic or uh, draft in like say baseball or football or basketball or something. You got the four characters, so um, I would get to pick one, and then uh, somebody would pick my opponent would pick two, and then I would pick uh, the fourth one. And that's what this is supposed to simulate. With two of the two in the middle, numbers two and number three are the ones that are forced. You don't know what they are going to be until the race starts, and you only get to pick characters one and four, and you run all four of them. Um, I've been uh, practicing. I'm going to do some more practicing uh, tomorrow, obviously. Uh, I don't do a lot of practicing on Tuesdays because I've got things going on for the stream, but uh, I'm looking forward to uh, running some more practice and uh, seeing what we can do um, to uh, try to hit that goal of top 10 because I am definitely looking forward to uh, playing more Final Fantasy Randomizer, and it's a great community. So um, if you want to... Uh, uh, go ahead on over to uh, FinalFantasyRandomizer.com and you can find uh, some more information uh, when it comes to Final Fantasy Randomizer. Um, you know, and for those who have watched my stream for any amount of time know that uh, I'm influenced by retro games. You know, you can see some retro game influences on, uh, uh, on the screen during the stream and uh, you can see them, uh, uh, you know, throughout uh, the, the room as well, so... Um, it's, uh, it's pretty fun, um, and, uh, I like it. Uh, I like playing Final Fantasy Randomizer, and, uh, if you want, again, you can just, uh, uh go over to FinalFantasyRandomizer.com, um, you can, uh, type FF, uh, exclamation point FFR in chat, get you there, FinalFantasyRandomizer.com, um, definitely a good time. So, uh, it looks like we still have, uh, let's see, how many matches do we still have playing? Um, it looks like there's still uh, two, two, two matches out. Um, so uh, we got some time still. Um, again, let's take a look again at what we are running today. This is my birthday bash deck. Um, so we've got uh, the Urnum Jins, the Jasmine Boreal, and the Earth Elemental, all four fives. And that is to represent the fact that I am turning 45. 
Uh, the Daryl lore represents that uh, I am currently 44 and will soon not be. Uh, the uh, serendipitous treats are there because I like them. And same with the bolts. The berserks are to go with the bash theme because you want to turn things sideways and bash your opponent's face. Uh, and then obviously some uh, restricted cards. Uh, Birds of Paradise, uh, all five Moxin, Lotus, Soul Ring, 19 lands. A couple of Ice Storms, uh, Disenchant, a Divine Offering, uh, Demonic Tutor, two Source of Plowshares, uh, Chaos Orb, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. And one copy of Sylvan Library. So, 10 away from a lad's lamp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, let's take a look at uh, the cards I am running in the sideboard. So, I've got two copies of Blue Elemental Blast, two copies of Red Elemental Blast. Uh, one copy of Armageddon, two Concordant Crossroads, one copy of Falling Star, two copies of Spirit Link, one more Disenchant, one Hercules Recall, one Icy Manipulator, and two Crumbles. All right, so the Disenchant is there um, if I have if I think that there's going to be some problematic artifacts. Uh, sorry, and enchantments. Uh, Concordant Crossroads is there for uh, world enchantments. For example, the Abyss. Because I do have, uh, I am a creature-based deck, so the Abyss would uh, wreck my day. And uh, as a state-based action, the last Enchant World stays, and the one that has been around the longest goes. So Concordance Crossroads is a one-mana way to deal with the Abyss. Plus, giving all my creatures haste is nef definitely not a bad thing. Um, Falling Star gets rid of multiple creatures um, with power, with toughness three or less, uh, or it even taps anything that that survives. Um, Hercules Recall uh, is against Artifact decks. I did bore that in against Bruins. Uh, Crumbles against Artifact decks as well. Uh, Icy Manipulator is a decent catch-all. Uh, Armageddon against Problematic Lands or ma Mana Hungry decks. Uh, for example, if somebody's playing Tron, uh, an Armageddon would be pretty good, and that would uh, definitely complement the um, two Ice Storms that are in the main deck. Uh, Spirit Links are there if uh, I play against an aggressive deck to Spirit Link my own creature to get ahead in life or Spirit Link their creature like I did against Bruins so that uh, it basically acts as a pacifism unless they can kill me in one shot. So um, that is what we've got going today. That Falling Star is awesome as is your Divine Offering. Yep. Uh, the uh, um, Falling Star, is, I actually bought that before the price spiked. Um, now, uh, it has come down a little bit, but because of the fact that it is an artist proof, at the time I paid $100 for it, and that was a little bit more than I wanted to spend, but uh, now it's worth more than that, so that's awesome. Um, the Divine Offering and that um, it, I've had for a little while, um, I actually, I had ordered uh, four Divine Offerings from Jeff Mangas, artist proofs, and it was taking him some time, and then somebody else asked for this painted one, Jeff contacted me because the person didn't like this painted one, so I snapped it up and kept it. So, uh, <laughs> um, and then uh, I just got that disenchant uh, last week uh, from Amy Weber. Um, I've got another one on its way as well. So uh, um, I'm definitely liking uh, the artist proofs, and I've come around, and I definitely am starting to like artwork on the back of them um, as well. Um, I have a Daralore. Uh, that uh, I've commissioned Anson Maddox to do. So he's going to do a uh, Darylor Artist Proof, and I asked him to do a repaint of the original art on the back of it. Not sure exactly when that is gonna happen though. Fascinating, it has Rich, if we get paired, your sideboard will own my soul. Well, that's good, that's good. Um, you know, uh, but I do have to draw the cards. You know, I mean, uh, last week uh, you were able to, uh, to kick my teeth in. Was it last week or the week before? I think it was last week where you kicked my teeth in pretty quickly. So, uh, um, yeah, it's just uh, one of those things. you got to draw the cards. Oh, I mean, my, my deck last week wasn't great. Don't, don't get me wrong. Um, I, I went two and one, but uh, I was able to uh, do some things that uh, my deck shouldn't have done, and I was able to play within the framework of the rules. Um, and having some, some rules knowledge and getting a little bit of variance in my way made uh, last Round week's timer deck ended. Uh, work uh, a little bit, uh, uh, it, let's say it, it overperformed. So, uh, yeah, so they said that the round timer has ended, and let's see what we've got for uh, matches that are, that are still out. Still looks like we have two matches out. Not sure what's going on with those matches, so... Uh, um, why don't I take another quick break, everybody? Um, I will be back, and we will play uh, more old school magic. So please stick around.
We are back. Thanks for sticking around, everybody. I definitely appreciate you all being here. Um, we have uh, got uh, two more rounds of Old School Magic, and we're just uh, waiting for uh, uh, those matches to be reported, and uh, that we can go. Just one match uh, still left to be reported, so uh, we will uh, get uh, going with round number two as soon as we can. Let's again take a look at tonight's deck. This is Birthday Bash. My 45th birthday is this weekend, so I wanted to play something that uh, represented that. So why not play with the, the four fives in old school magic that can attack? So uh, Ernum Jin obviously sees a whole heck of a lot of play. Uh, he has a, a, an archetype named after Ernum Geddon. Uh, Jasmine Boreal is just a 4-5 legend for 5 mana. Vanilla. That's all it is. You four pairing five. received. And then uh, Earth Elemental is a 4-5 for five, 5 as well. Those represent 45 when I turn 45 this weekend. The one Darylor represents me currently being 44. Um, the Serendipa Freets are there because I like them. And uh, then uh, all kinds of other fun stuff is well in the deck. And then the Berserks are there uh, to uh, go with the Bash, uh, you know, in Birthday Bash. So, because um, I want to turn some stuff sideways. So, um, looks like we have an opponent, and we will be welcoming uh, Stephen to our uh, stream in just uh, a few timer moments. Started. So, uh, we will be getting that going as soon as we can, and uh, then we will uh, play uh, another round of Old School Magic. So, let's. Uh, Send a message over to Steven right now, and whoops, if I can spell, and uh, we can uh, get that going here in just uh, a moment. So I definitely appreciate you all sticking around through the break, and we will get some more magic going on right now. I play three rounds of Old School Magic every single Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, here we go. Here is my opponent. How's it going? Hey, Rich. How was your first round? It's fun, man. I got to play Chris. Yeah? And that that five-color deck he was talking about, which is really he, cool. Uh, he, 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 Chris really likes to play with, with spicy decks. And yeah. uh, as we were talking on the stream, that uh, it seems like uh, more people and more people are trying to, to get that spice award every week than, than people are trying to spike the tournaments, which is awesome. So uh, that's that's the essence of old school is to, to play what you love, uh, not necessarily play to, to beat each other up. So Yeah, I think it's trying to make like cards that we liked as kids work. Uh, in, in a competitive setting. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> Caffeinated in chat says, crush, kill, destroy. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes sometimes that's what I do. You know, and sometimes I'm in the mood on my stream where I want to play Lion Dip Bolt. And then uh, there are times where I want to play Eureka or I want to play a Reanimator or, you know, sometimes I want to play Atog and sometimes I want to play weird stuff like last week's Dice Factory deck where everything was getting plus one, plus one counters or uh, a deck like tonight. So. Um, you can put uh, three on top of one and both on top of two. Okay, you can do the same. Three on top of one, both on top of two. And you want to choose even or odd? Odd. Okay. It is odd. It is a one. Right. So you can play first. Good luck. All the way on the play. Nope, I'll have to toss that back. I will keep. Uh, two can go on top. Okay. to uh, adjust the screen a little bit. We're going to zoom in on your play mat. Yeah. Alright, this one I'll keep. And I'll put that under. Okay. 
Okay. All right. And uh, go whenever you want. All right. I'll go Saiga, Ruby, Elvish Archer. Okay. And pass. I will draw. Uh, Taiga, Emerald, Birds of Paradise. Go ahead. Okay. Draw, Mountain, I'll swing with the Archer. I'll take it. 18. Right. Then I'll play a Brass Claw Orcs. Okay, 3 2, correct? Yep. 3 2 can't block anything with power greater than a 1. Okay, sounds good. All set? Yep. Yep. Okay, untap, draw. Uh, Savannah, Soul Ring, Serendip. Yep. And you can go. Tiger. Elf, and I'll pass. Okay, untap. Upkeep, I take a point. I'm at 17. Draw. Cards in your hand? One. Um, I'm going to attack for three. Yep, I got a 17. And uh, you can go. Attack, draw, play a forest. I'll swim with everything. Uh, I have no blocks. Okay, so that's six. I'm, no, I'm going to uh, swords the orcs. Okay. Move, I go back up to 20. So I will take three. Yep. So I've got 20 to 14. Yep, and I pass. All right, untap. I will take a point. I'm at 13. I'll draw. And I will play a tropical island. And I will say go. Tap. Draw. Play a tiger, and I'll pass. Okay. Upkeep, I take a point. Down to 12. Draw. And I will say go. Draw. Mountain. Mm -hmm. and another orc. Okay. And I'll pass. No cards. All right. I'm at 11. Draw. Ruby. Uh, go ahead. Tap. Draw. Play scavenger folk. Okay. And I'll pass. We go to 10. Draw. Here we go. Earth Elemental. Nice. And uh, go ahead. Tap. Draw. Uh, and I'll pass. Okay. Untap. Upkeep, I go to nine. Draw. Yep. Uh, go ahead. Draw. And I'll bolt you. Sure. I'm at six. And I'll play a wheel. Okay. Gonna get rid of uh, a jet, a berserk, and a bunch of lands. Play a lotus. Yep. Um, I'll swing with everything. I will. I'll block the brass claw orcs with my dib. I will block the archers with my earth elemental. And I will block the scavenger folk with my birds. Alright, so, all right, so that, that, that. Alright, so I will bolt the earth elemental. Okay. That's fine, it takes three. It's going to die to first strike damage when we get there. Yep. Then I will also bolt the dib. 
Okay. All right, so I'm going to lose my Earth Elemental and my Div. Yep. You're going to lose your Brass Claw Orcs. Yep. I'm going to lose my Birds, and I'm going to take one. Yep. So I go down to five, and I survive because for some reason you didn't bolt me to death. Yep, because I misplayed. And... Yep, I'll pass. Uh, end step, I'm going to disenchant your Lotus. Okay. Untap. Draw. All right, so I'm going to play a Mishra's Factory. And then I am going to play a Jasmine Boreal. Yeah. Um, I'm going to play a Chaos Orb. Okay. And then I'm going to activate the Chaos Orb now. Okay. We're going to no, use uh... my Jasmine as your archers. Okay. Hit. And you can go. Alright. Draw. Play a Mountain. And so you're at six. Or I'm five. at five. Yeah. Fireball? Five, I'll dis okay. disintegrate you for five. Yeah. No, that's fine. No. Alright. So. See what we can do because that was one quick game. <laughs> Appreciate everybody who is here. This is my opponent, Steven. He took me out in game number one, and we are shuffling up for game number two. His deck is red and green. It is pretty, uh, pretty aggressive uh, with some uh, early drops, um, some uh, pretty efficient creatures, and then uh, he's got some uh, some burn spells in there. So let's see what we can do to stave off the onslaught in round number two. You know, the easier thing to do would be for me to uh, just put some creatures on the table <laughs> and let them stay there. But he had uh, other things in mind. That's what happens sometimes. Though. Sometimes your opponents just don't let you have stuff on the table because that's what their game plan is. <laughs> right? I mean, that, that's what you're doing. You, you put stuff on the table. Yep. You don't want me to have stuff. And uh, you turn your stuff sideways. So... Um, you can put uh, one on top of three and both on top of two. Okay, you can do the same. And I will play first. Good luck. Good luck. Mm. 
No, they'll keep. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Tiger, go. Uh, forest, elf, pass. No draw. Uh, Ruby, Volcanic Island, Time Walk. Okay. Untap, draw. Um, City of Brass. I'll take one and cast an Icy Manipulator. I'm at 19, and you can go. Tap, draw. Red Mountain. And an Orc. Okay. I'll pass. Alright, untap. Draw. Mox. Um. Go ahead. Untap. And any upkeep? No. Effects. All right. Draw. I'll play Pendlehaven. Mm -hmm. I'll move to combat. Inside combat before you declare attackers, I'm going to tap your hook. Yep. Then... Three cards. Play an archer. Okay. And another archer. Okay. And it'll pass. Um, you have how many cards? Three. Okay. Uh, end step. I'm going to take a point and I will swords the orc. Okay. Put you at 23. Untap. Yep. Draw. City of Brass. I will take a point. I'm at 17. I will cast an earth elemental. And you can go. Tap, draw, play a forest. So the earth elemental is a four or five, right? That is correct. Right. I'll play an orc. Okay. And another elf. Okay. And I'll pass. Um, all right, untap. Draw. Chaos orb. Yep. Go ahead. Tap. Draw. Okay, six, I'll disintegrate uh, the Earth Elemental. Okay, he's exiled. All right, then I'll move to combat. Hang on. You're tapped out, correct? Yep. All right, um, I'm going to tap an Archer. Okay. And then I'm going to activate my Chaos Orb. Okay. On your Orc, using okay. my... Using my eyes. Yep. And I missed. Man, I suck tonight. Okay, hit me for five. Yep. Twelve. And I'll pass. Untap. Draw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You've got ten on the table, and I'm at twelve. Go ahead. Untap. Draw. Um, do I just have 10? 5, 7, 8, 9, 
Yep, ten. All right. Uh, oh, we'll hold on. Everybody. Inside combat before we okay. declare attackers, I'm going to attack the orc. Yep. Okay, so orc. Okay. Orc is tapped. All right. So two, four. You got six coming at me then. Um. You make it seven. Yep. Okay, I'm at five. Yep. Uh, it'll pass. Untap. Draw. And that's game because I just got mana sources. So. Yucky, 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 yucky. This deck is not doing me much good. So what, what is it? Um, so I put a theme deck together because my birthday is this weekend. So that's why okay. I have all the four fives in the deck with uh, the Jasmine okay. Boreal and the Earth Elemental and I've got Urnum Gins as well. So um, do you want to play a third game just for, for grins? Sure, sure. Okay. I'm going to go back and we'll pull out my uh, sideboards. What was that? I, uh, I, I de-sideboarded. Okay, um, yeah, I'll de-sideboard okay. real quick, too. Yeah. I mean, I was I just brought in red elementals. Yeah, I have blue elemental blasts, uh, spirit links, and the uh, ice manipulator. So, oh, and I also bought brought in another fun card, um, my falling star. Nice. Yep, that's good against me. Yeah, it would have been great if I could have drawn it. <laughs> but, yeah, can't deal with all the big dudes if I can't keep my big dudes on the table. Because Elvish Archer with uh, a Lightning Bolt is pretty good against my four fives. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, yeah, you're just you're just able to amass an army so quickly. Yeah. You, just, you can just do whatever. You're fine. Yeah. Yep. That's. I mean, that that's pretty much it. You know. Then I've got uh, Urnims at the four drop, and then I've got a Shivan. And oh, okay. Everything else is basically burn yeah so i mean balance is something you have to worry about earthquakes something you have to worry about but yep. if somebody's earthquaking you uh, you're still winning because you've dealt so much damage more than likely um you know that uh, they're taking damage from their own earthquake after having taken some damage from your stuff so yeah um, yeah that, and i'm playing um four x spells and play two two fireballs two disintegrates yeah yeah so you definitely have uh you definitely have some staying power with that deck um, so I'll play first. Good luck. Right. Yep, I'll keep. I'm all looking at this. Six mana sources and a time walk. Not Ooh. gonna keep. <laughs> yeah, not against me. No. Definitely not. See what we can do. And that's got no mana sources in it. So we went uh, from uh, feast to famine. So let's see what we can do with our next mulligan. Well, this is just for fun, so don't uh, um, don't put any cards under. Okay, no, that's fine. I just uh, yeah. I just, I do. Do need mana to cast spells, so that, yeah. that second one not, would not have been so great. Let's uh, let's give your uh, stream viewers a, a good game. Let's not yeah. uh, mulligan down to, to nothing. So. Like seriously, this is a one lander. <laughs> I mean, I can cast a berserk on one of your creatures. I hey, have uh, I have like thirty mana sources in this deck. Wow. Uh, I, 19 lands, the Moxin, the Lotus, uh, Soul Ring, um, and four Birds of Paradise. So, yeah, four Birds of Paradise, five Mox, that's nine. Soul Ring is 10. Lotus is uh, 11, 19 lands. Uh, yeah, so we've got 30 mana sources in the deck. Oh, I, I don't think I've ever built a deck of 30 mana sources. It's just, my style is always to be like under. Uh, you know, on the low end of mana. Yeah. I'll try this one. Soul Ring, go. Uh, Taiga. And pass. Untap. Draw. Hmm. Plateau. Birds of Paradise. Go ahead. Uh, 
Magic Mountain. All right, I'll chain the bird. Okay. And uh, yeah, then I'll chain you. Okay. Seventy. Untap. Draw. Savannah. Bird. Ice storm your tiger. Go ahead. Uh, I got two draw. cards left. Forest. Mm -hmm. And I'll pass. Alright, untap. Draw. Go ahead. Draw. Mountain. Orc. Yep. I'll pass. I you will. Know, the more I play this deck, the more I really like this card. Yeah, uh, it's a 3-2 for 3, which is really good. I'm going to bolt yeah. it. Okay. Uh, untap. Draw. And I will say go. Draw. Forest. Right, another orc. Okay. And I'll pass. Bolt the orc. Untap. Draw. Dismal. Thank you for the subscription. I definitely appreciate it. Um, for those who are not aware, uh, Dismal is also a streamer. So a uh, shout out to uh, to Dismal. Uh, <clears throat> um, Dismal with uh, the gift subs as well. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Taiga, go ahead. Not putting on a great show today, but uh, I definitely appreciate uh, the, the stream support. Um, you can see a, a link to Dismal Stream in the chat, and we just had a, a clip from Dismal Stream as well. I right, pass. Okay, I will draw, and I will say go. Draw, I go. Mm -hmm. All set? Draw. Taiga, go ahead. Draw. Close um, all right. I'll disintegrate you for six. Okay. I'm at 11. That'll pass. Uh, draw. Uh, I'm going to ice storm the Pendlehaven. I'm going to attack you for zero with my birds. <laughs> Go ahead. Send the message. And tap. Draw. Mountain. Another expo. I'll disintegrate you for six again. Okay. I'm at five. Oh, and I'll pass. Untap. Draw. Go ahead. Tap. Draw. Fireball, you for six? Yep. First. Yep. I had a, uh, a sword, a disenchant, a bolt, and a chaos orb in my hand. So I could deal with something if you cast a, a, a create another creature. <laughs> I yeah, was able to... uh, I, just kept, I just kept drawing. Uh, uh, so, you know, I had I had three or two disintegrates and a fireball. And yeah. finally it was like, yeah, it... time to just start, you know, throwing some... Uh, Hey, what, what's that disenchant? Is that like an artist proof? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I actually just got it. Oh, let me uh, pull it back out. Um, yeah. I just got it in the mail uh, last week. Um, artist proof from uh, Amy Weber. I got another one on the way. Uh, it's uh, foreign black bordered. Cool. So uh, I'm. Uh, uh, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I have uh, a Daralor artist proof that I just ordered from Anson uh, so it's going to be a couple of months probably before I get that because Anson Maddox is pretty backed up most of the old school um, artists are, are backed up a couple of months at least if not three or four so uh, I'm so, going to have him do the, the original art on the back I told him that uh, well I talked to his wife Brenda who is absolutely amazing by the way um, that uh, I like to play with my artist proofs, so I want to make sure that uh, the artwork is recognizable to the card. So uh, uh -huh. um, 
that's uh, why I asked for basically a repaint of the original art on the back of it. I'm hoping that uh, um, it turns out amazing. Well, actually, I know it's going to turn out amazing because I, I have no doubts whatsoever. Um, the only artist proofs that I have that I can't play like that, um, I have a, a couple of Argothian Pixies from uh, uh, from Amy Weber, and the art isn't as recognizable um, on the back um, on those Pixies as it is you know, like, I mean, Disenchant is, you know, pretty iconic art, you know, Shatter or like the Daralore or whatever. But uh, the art on the back of my um, Argothian Pixies isn't as recognizable, so I don't play with those um, face down with the, the, the new art showing. Uh, but uh, I, I also don't play Argothian Pixies very often, though, so, you know, that's a thing, too. Yeah, so. yeah they're not, um, with, with Factory Restricted, they aren't as good. Yeah, yeah, definitely so. And uh, I mean, that's a, uh, you know, Restricted Factory makes those Elvish archers that much better because of the fact that you don't have to worry about uh, uh, you know attacking into a factory as often because mm -hmm. you know factory can't block and then pump itself up to three three. So yeah, I don't know. Like it, I, I've been trying some, you know, I've been playing this deck for a couple of weeks and I keep trying different sideboarding strategies. So. Mm -hmm. uh, at first, I was pulling out the archers usually when I was sideboarding, but actually, what I've been pulling out now are the. Um, like that time, I pulled out my two chain lightnings in the four, um, and brought in three red red blasts. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I can understand is, boarding out chain lightnings against me because I have access to the red mana, um, and that's something that uh, you're going to want to do with, uh, you know, against any deck that has access to red mana. Something we were talking about. Uh, um, uh, in between matches is that uh, you know like Blood Moon decks first of all Blood Moon doesn't see a lot of play in Paladin Magic it probably should see a little bit more but uh, a mistake with, with deck building when people play Blood Moon is that they play uh, Chain Lightning in their Blood Moon decks so you give your opponent the opportunity to either deal with your stuff or do do something you know when they, you give them all mountains and then you Chain Lightning um, you know they can throw it back at you now obviously uh, you could probably uh, you know throw it back at their face as well but uh, it's one of those things chain lightning is just one of those weird cards that you know you don't always want to put it in every single deck that's running red so yeah uh, yeah yeah and you know blood moon something I was experimenting with too so I got it in the sideboard mm -hmm. um, I thought about it for you but... oh it would have wrecked me I don't have any basics you don't have any yeah, I don't have any basics. So if I if I could have gotten a birds or moxen down, I might have been okay under a blood boon. But uh, I mean, I did board in blue blasts as well against you. So uh, with uh, you know the one main deck disenchant and one additional disenchant in the sideboard, um, I might have been okay. I didn't actually board in uh, the other disenchant because it didn't seem necessary. Um, but uh, I definitely think that the the blue blasts uh, um, could have helped there. But you have to draw the yeah. cards in order to cast them, though. So it's you know, yeah, it was things. it was the Earth Elemental, so I didn't know what other red you were on. Right, um, that's right. why. I mean, so, and uh, uh, Earth Elementals and Lightning Bolts. That's it. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, th th that's all. Not not a big deal. Uh, not a huge bunch. Uh, like I said, the the Earth Elementals and the Jasmine Boreal are there because of their power and toughness, as well as the Urnum Jins being four fives because they turned forty five this upcoming weekend. Yeah. So, that's uh, you know th that's part of the theme of the deck is you know just uh four or five for my 45th birthday so. yeah well thank you well, again you. for the games yep. uh good luck next round and uh, you yep. have a great night sir you too Thanks. See you. well chat we are not doing so hot this this week but uh that is okay we are having fun and uh that is what really counts right so uh our record is currently oh and two which is not on the good side. So we are hoping that uh, we can, in fact, uh, uh, pull out a victory in um, uh, round number three. So uh, let's again take a look at uh, my deck today. This is Birthday Bash. Um, I put this theme deck together because I have uh, my 45th birthday coming up this weekend. Uh, so uh, because in honor of my 45th birthday, the Jasmine Boreal, the Urnum Jins, and the Earth Elementals are all four fives to represent my 45th birthday. The one Daralore is a four four to represent that I am currently 44, but soon won't be. Serendibs are there because I like them. They're a good creature. 
Uh, bolts are awesome, so might as well run them. And I want I like having my my artist proofs, so I have my disenchant and my uh, orms chant. I said orms chant, <laughs> divine offering in there. It's not the first time I've called it orms chant. Um, and then a couple of swords to plowshares. Uh, berserks are part of the quote unquote bash plan where I'm turning things sideways. So I'm hoping that I can actually berserk something and maybe do something with it. But getting my butt kicked so far, but that's okay. Um, out of the sideboard. Uh, tonight we have uh, two Blue Blasts, two Red Blasts, one Armageddon, two Concord Crossroads, uh, one Falling Star, two Spirit Links, two Crumbles, one Icy Manipulator, one Hercules Recall, and an additional Disenchant. So um, in the sideboard, just so you are aware, the Crumble, the uh, Signed Spirit Link, uh, obviously the Falling Star, and the Disenchant. Those are all artist proofs as well. So uh, all fun additions to... Uh, fun parts of my collection. So um, I do appreciate everybody who is here. Uh, my regularly scheduled stream, we've got uh, one more match to go. Uh, we, I play three rounds of Old School Magic every Tuesday night with the Northern Paladins as part of the Tuesday Night Gauntlet. Uh, join me tomorrow. We've got uh, another match from the Old School Magic Summer Derby. Top eight match between Seth Roncaroni and Jason Seaman. Both of them have been on stream. Uh, they were on stream this weekend. Uh, Seth dispatched uh, Pez Unholy and uh, um, Jason dispatched uh, Michael Scheffenecker. Now, Pez, uh, Michael, and Seth are all playing the same main deck. So, Seth is the only one who remains. But Jason has already beaten this deck once. So, who knows what uh, Jason can do tomorrow night. Um, but uh, we will see right here on stream. Top 8 match from the Old School Magic Summer Derby between Seth and and Jason. So uh, I'm going to take uh, a quick break. I appreciate you all being here. Please stick around. Don't touch that dial. I'll be back with another round of Old School Magic.
I'm back. We got another kitty. This is Lucky. Uh, up until we got Snickers, Lucky was our youngest kitty. Yucky, La, Lucky is uh, a little over a year old. And he's full of piss and vinegar. Um, so we have four kitties. Um, I will not bring our fourth kitty in. Our fourth kitty, her name is Angel. She's like 16 years old. She's old. She's frail and pretty sick. So not going to... Uh, subject her to that because she just basically likes to sit down and uh, lay there and sleep all day maybe eat every once in a while and drink and whatever but this is lucky he is rambunctious little hellraiser but now that we've got the kitten snickers yeah lucky has met his match um lucky doesn't come in here very often none of the cats do like i said uh, Lucky has actually come down quite a bit in the last few weeks since we got the kitten, so thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, um, uh, I'm allergic to dogs, um, so uh, um, a few years back uh, I had pneumonia pretty badly, and uh, one of the side effects afterwards, uh, my physiology changed within my body. I am now allergic to uh, nuts, um, peanuts and tree nuts. Um, I am lactose intolerant. Um, and I grew an allergy to dogs, which is weird. So um, we ended up uh, trading our dog, Jetta, uh, to get Lucky because the owner of Lucky wanted a dog and uh, Jetta did not get along with the cats. Actually, for the entire time that we owned Jetta, our cats lived upstairs and Jetta stayed downstairs. But uh, we ended up uh, finding somebody who could give Jetta a great home. And uh, this is how we got uh, Lucky. And uh, Lucky, uh, Lucky has adopted me as, um, as his pet. Uh, I'm not. I mean, the, the cats aren't my pets. We. I mean, anybody who is a cat owner knows that uh, we are their pets. They are our pets. But uh, uh, yeah, Lucky has adopted me. Lucky is really affectionate when it comes to me. Um, not as much with my wife and with my son. Um, and uh, yeah, he's got a really nice soft fur. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's crazy that all three of those teammates made it in the top 16 with the same dick, same deck, and not having any dibs. Well, part of it is that uh, um, they're running the um, cities in a bottle in their sideboards, and uh, they wanted to not get blown out by city in a bottle themselves, but uh, um, they wanted to be able to uh, deal with uh, people on their own. Uh, when it came to uh, people getting too greedy with uh, Arabian Nights cards. So that that's that was all part of it. They wanted to be aggressive decks, which they are completely and totally aggressive decks. And, uh, you know, they uh, turned things sideways and they put a lot of pressure on early with uh, their uh, Savannah Lions and the um, Orders of Leaper. Um, and then they can uh, close things out with Sarah Angel or the Burn. So... Um, all kinds of good things going on. And uh, a card that does not see a lot of play in Old School Magic, believe it or not, is Gloom. So, you know, their their main ga game plan of turning cards sideways um, is white creatures, and you don't have to fear Gloom all that often. And I don't even know if there are any Glooms in the top 16 or top 8 or, or whatnot. So it was definitely a good strategy. Um, so... Um, it's working. It worked out well for them. You know, uh, all of all of them made it into the top 16. I mean, there were three teammates all playing the exact same deck, and all three of them made it in the top 16. So uh, definitely a good strategy. Now they were playing. Uh, is that Boreal? I think uh, it's four strips and four of all kinds of other things. So um, we've got a new pairing. So I'm gonna let the kitty go, and then uh, we're gonna go uh, play in a round number three. So uh, let's uh, again take a look at uh, what we are running today. This is my birthday bash deck. I let Lucky go outside. So, well, not outside, but into the other room. So, uh,. Um, this is the deck, and uh, we will see against whom we are playing for round number three. Uh, we are playing against Rich, so uh, let's uh, get Rich here into the stream, and uh, we will uh, 
see what we can do about possibly getting a W on the board. Shall we? So let's see what we can do. Appreciate everybody who stuck around through uh, the break and has been sticking around for uh, the show. It has not been the greatest of shows, but uh, we will see what happens in uh, round number three. And I will check in and we will see what we can do. Um, appreciate everybody who is here. This is my regular scheduled stream. I play three rounds of old school magic every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. It's part of the Northern Paladins Tuesday night gauntlet. So if you want some more information regarding the Northern Paladins, you can head on over to northernpaladins.com. Uh, the link is in the chat right now and get some information on the Northern Paladins. The Paladin Magic that we play on Tuesday nights, the Tuesday Night Gauntlet, and uh, Alpha 40. So, welcome back to the stream, my friends. So, uh, we are paired up today. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. You know, we have to. We definitely have to play the games. So, uh, who knows? Who knows what will happen? Uh, I said you kicked my teeth in the last time we played. So... Was it two weeks ago? I can't remember. Oh uh, yeah, it was two weeks ago because I got beaten by James last week. So yeah, and I went I went two and one and got beaten by James. So yeah, and then you three would two weeks ago, right? No. No. Uh, two one. Two one. Oh, okay. All right. I've been playing since uh, the Uh oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm triggered by the playmat already. Yeah, because the hint of Torak playmat. So I'm playing a Jews on playmat, and I'm not playing any Jews on. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, you can do the same. Uh, even or odd? Odds. Okay. It's been odd all night, but it's finally back to even. Number two. So I will play first. Do here. I will keep. All right. So I will go tropical islands, mox jet, demonic tutor. I will get a card, and then I will say go. Just for myself. One, two, three. Hmm. Uh, Mox Emerald. Taiga. Uh, Chaos Orb. Activate the Chaos Orb. I'll use my Taiga as your Juggernaut. Hit. Holy cow, I remembered how to flip a Chaos Orb tonight. And uh, you can go. Did you miss one earlier? I've missed two already. And, like, really, really badly, too. <laughs> I'll be sure to watch later. Mm hmm. Right, untap. Uh, Taiga, Serendib, and Sylvan Library. Go ahead. Three cards. Untap. I'll take one from the dip. I'm at 19. Draw one, two, three. 
I will pay four. So I'm at 15. I'm going to attack for three. Put you at 17. Um, and then I'm going to play a Birds of Paradise and another Birds of Paradise. And I will say go. Three cards. The Ocean Soldier. Okay. Uh, untap. Upkeep. I take one. I'm at 14. Draw one, two, three. I'll take this one. Put those two back. I'll attack for three. Put you at 14. I will play a City of Brass and an Earth Elemental. And you can go. Correct. Say pass. Uh, end step, I'm going to disenchant your Yoshin soldier. Untap. Upkeep, I take a point. I'm at 13. Draw one, two, three. I'll take this one. I will attack for seven. And I will play another dib, and I will say go. Okay. Okay. That is a dancing scimitar. Untap. Upkeep. I take two from my two dibs. Brings me down to 11. Draw one, two, three. I'll take this one. I will attack with all these. Okay, and then I will Berserk on the Earth Elemental. Just for kicks. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, so we're playing against some Tron stuff. So we got Tron, we got black, which I didn't see what the black was really for. Did see some artifacts in there. So let's uh, see what we can do uh, for some sideboard stuff, shall we? I think I got some sideboard cards that'll work against you. <laughs> I have a lot of sideboard cards that will work against you. See what we could do with some of these cards. Make some changes. I think we're good.
Dancing Scimitar is a fun card. 1-5 Flyer for 4. Artifact Creature from Arabian Nights. It is a very good defensive card. Now, because uh, my opponent is playing black and playing artifacts, we're going to assume, and I may or may not be correct here, but uh, I'm going to assume that there is a certain world enchantment in the deck somewhere. And because of that certain world enchantment, that uh, certain one mana green cards in my sideboard may be uh, pretty decent against said world enchantments. Maybe. We'll have to see. I can't confirm or deny <laughs> that line of reasoning. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, my line of thinking is probably valid. But we shall see. Mm -hmm. um, so far I've seen one power creatures out of your deck, so... <laughs> Where mine have three and four power? I mean, I can give haste to my birds of paradise. You can do whatever, you're fine. Give haste to my birds of paradise. I can tap them for mana. Now, yes, Concordant Crossroads does in fact give haste where um, Instill Energy does not give the enchanted creature haste. It can attack as though it had haste, but you put Instill Energy on a Birds of Paradise, you cannot tap it for mana to turn a king into play. Anything with a tap ability, you still cannot use it with an Instill Energy. With a Concordant Crossroad, yes, you can. So, just so everybody is aware. You're mulliganing? I didn't cut your deck, so that's your fault, not mine. Keep this one. Uh, you can put uh, two on top of one and both on top of three. I mean, I declined to cut the last one, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Seems good. Uh, Tiger, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Birds of Paradise. Go ahead. Yep. Okay. Untap. Draw. Underground C. Uh, go ahead. No blocks, but I will bolt it. Okay. Go ahead. Untap. Draw. 
volcanic islands, earth elemental. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Cards left in your hands? Okay. Untap. Draw. Taiga. Go ahead. Four. That is a Triskillian. Um, end step. I'm going to cast Divine Offering on the Triskillian. Okay. And then I'll gain six. No, I gain six. Yeah, so I'm at 23. Untap. Draw. Serendip of Fruit. Go ahead. <clears throat> there you go. Sure. I don't know. I do. So you gain two. Put you at twenty two. That's more than five. You have Tron online. Yeah. Okay. And you're you're fireballing the dip. Okay. All right. Untap. No cards left. Icy Manipulator. Um, go ahead. Okay. End step, Sword Your Trike. And then you gain one. So I'm at 20 and you're at 23. Okay. And then end step tap your factory. Untap. Draw. Ruby. Uh, go ahead. Okay, and step to Happy Factory. Draw. Go ahead. Two cards. And step to Happy Factory. Draw. There we go. Factory of my own. Go ahead.
that is a Suchi. Uh, end step. Tap your. Tap your factory. Untap. Draw. Play another Birds of Paradise. And you can go. How many cards are in your hand? One. Okay. Uh, end step, tap your Suchi. Draw. Oh, let's try this. Serendip. And you can go. Tap, tap your shoot sheet. Untap. Draw. Go ahead. And step, tap your shoot sheet. Draw. Cards in hand. Activate my factory. Attack. Okay, take two. Put you at 21. Uh, go ahead. Is that a Colossus of Sardia? Colossus of Sardia. Nice. Please tell me that it can survive one turn. <laughs> well, it's going to resolve. Yeah. Uh, um, end step. I will tap the Colossus. Since it doesn't untap during unstep, it seems all right. Yeah. Untap. Draw. Savannah. Tap your Suchi. Activate my factory and attack. Before blockers, I'm going to swords your mistress. So you're going to tap it, and so that you gain three, correct? Uh, uh, yeah, that's right. That's correct. Yep. Yeah, I'll tap. All right. So you're at 24, and then you're going to take two from my factory. Put you down to 22. No, you just took it off mine, not yours. I'm at 20. You're at 22. Um, and, uh, close combat. I will disenchant the Suchi. Okay. Uh, one, and then I will pass the turn. Seems good. Put you at 18. Go ahead. That's, no, I'll leave it back. Yeah. Oh. 
doesn't untap during your untap step. Only activate, oh, only untap it during your upkeep. Okay. Gotcha. I knew it cost nine to untap. I just wasn't sure when. So. I will draw. I will activate the factory and attack with you. And you can go. Untap. Draw. How many cards are in your hand now? Four. Four. Okay. Um, I will activate the factory and attack with two. Oops. Um, go ahead. Tap, draw, activate, and attack for two. Go ahead. Okay, it's a 4-6. Four, 4-6. Six. Four, six. Yep. Uh, end step, I will tap the golem. Untap. Draw. Activate the factory and attack for two. Put you at 11. And I will cast a soul ring. And you can go. End step, I will tap the scimitar. Untap. I see doing some serious work. Yep. Draw. Savannah. Earn him gin. Um, that's gonna be the bottle, right? Oh, shoot. Yep, you're right. My fault. I was kidding. Mm -hmm. Um, Mox Pearl. Go ahead. Five cards again, right? Yeah, five cards. Game one. Two. Thirteen. Oh, wait, you can't have a dancing scimitar on the table because of your city in a bottle. Oh, right. Yep, so keep it in your hand. Yep. It, it, it did affect some things. Uh, so for two turns, you, you, you gained an extra life. So you're at 15 now because it's in your hand and you have the... Uh, okay. Yep, so you're at 15. Yep, no, I got you. Uh, so it's my my, uh, my Urnum Jin is... Uh, foreign black border it doesn't have the Arabian Nights symbol on it oh, so okay, same thing yep okay. um, so or maybe it does I just can't see it oh it actually does it's just it's hard to see yeah so you're at 15 four
Okay. All right, uh, end step, I will tap the up sign is going. Draw. I will say go. Six cards? Yeah, six cards. Yep. Sure. One, two, five, seven, nine. Uh, how are you getting nine from? How are you getting two mana from your swamp? One, two, five, seven, eight, seven, nine. Yep. Nine. Okay. When you move to attacks, yeah, I'm, attack. I'm going to tap the Colossus. Okay. And you're attacking for eight? Yeah. Okay, I'll take it. I'm at 12. Okay, untap. Draw. Uh, I'll play another Birds of Paradise. I will activate my factory and I'll attack with two. Five cards. You can go. Would you hit 18? Yep. Untap your Colossus. Sure. Um, I will tap your Colossus inside combat. Okay. I will block both. Okay. 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 Untap. Draw. Uh, I'm going to enter my scoop phase. Because, <laughs> yeah, well, with the Urnum and all these lands in hand, I really wasn't going to do much. So. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's okay. what we can do with these. <clears throat> Alrighty. Appreciate everybody sticking around. Uh, my deck isn't doing so hot tonight, but that's okay. Um, we are going into game number three, round number three. My opponent is playing black and red Tron, a bunch of artifact creatures. I do assume that the Abyss is in there. We have seen some X spells in there as well for the red cards. A bunch of artifact creatures. So some fun stuff going on on uh, his side of the table. And then uh, for those who did not see, I am playing my birthday bash deck. 
um, called that because I will be turning 45 this upcoming weekend. So I have some some four five creatures and four four creatures in my deck. Four fives for the uh, to represent my 45th birthday and four fours to represent that uh, I am currently 44 and soon will no longer be. So let's see what we can do. So I reset our life and. I'm gonna have to, yeah. Well, it's gonna have to be uh, Obsidianus Golem, or maybe, uh, maybe I can play uh, Transmutation and um, or uh, Crawworm because Crawworm is a six-four, and then Transmutation to make it a, a four-six. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, I was gonna do Magic on uh, Saturday, but my wife wants to go out of town um, as a, a surprise. You can put two on top. You're fine. So, uh, well, it's not much of a surprise because I know about it. But uh, uh, when I stream, she she has to she can't really surprise me with with certain things because I have to uh, I have to know if uh, um, certain things are going to happen uh, ahead of times uh, because of the stream. So, all right, good luck. I will keep this hand. Uh, factory, go ahead. Okay. All right. Untap. Draw. Uh, City of Brass. I will take a point and I will disenchant the Ivory Tower. And you can go. I'm at 19. No. From what? <laughs> it's not that good. <laughs> Mm hmm Okay. I'm at 17. Untap. Draw. Underground C. Activate and swing. Go ahead. Tap. Draw. I'm going to take a point for a Serendip. I'm at 16. Go ahead. I figured that was happening. Fourteen. Untap. Draw. Chaos Orb. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. All right. Untap. Draw. Tundra. I'm going to put a spirit link on your juggernaut. And then I am going to activate the chaos orb. All right, so I'm going to use my spirit link to represent your. Yeah. Um. 
I'll go with your Urza's Tower. Hit. <clears throat> and you can go. Mm-hmm. Okay. You have to attack. Yep, yeah, so I go down to 9 and then up to 14. All set? Okay. Untap. To rock. Yeah, no, I hear you. Uh, go ahead. Um, I'll activate my factory. I'll block the one that's not enchanted. Okay. Pump the factory to 3-3. Three, three. I go down to 9, then back up to 14. Untap. Draw. Savannah. I'll put another spirit link on the same juggernaut. And you can go. Sure. Okay, how many cards in hand? Four. Okay. Okay, I will take five down to nine. I will gain ten up to nineteen. Just accidentally tap something. Was this yeah. Okay, yep. Okay. Untap. Draw. Um, go ahead. Okay. And how many cards does that give you? Okay. All right. So upkeep. Upkeep. Put you at 19. Okay. Mm hmm. Yep. Okay. And that costs eight to activate to deal four damage, correct? So any target, yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Sure. You have to attack with the juggernaut too. Yes. Sir. Okay. So I don't block any of it. I take seven, and then gain ten. So I end up uh, plus three. Up at. 22. Yep. Uh, on draw. Uh, six cards. Go ahead. Um, 
Well, no blocks, obviously. But, uh, um, I'm going to berserk your factory. Okay. All right, so I'll, I'll end up uh, plus one on this exchange. He gets rid of your factory. So I'll be at 23. Two, four, six. I see six. Okay. I'm at 19. Okay. Cards in hand? All right. Untap. Draw. Go ahead. Six cards. Alright, I will take it. I end up plus five. I'm at twenty-four. Okay, I'm down twenty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright. All set? Draw. I'm going to crumble the sushi. Yep. So you gain four. Put you at 23. And you can go. Cards in hand? I have five cards in hand. Okay. Gain one. Put you at 24. Okay. Okay. All right, I'll go plus five. I'm at 25. You got some counters for your trike? Um, yeah. All right, untap. Taiga. Icy Manipulator. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, so that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, so that brings me down to 12, and then I gain 5, I'm at 17. Correct. Okay, so I'm... I, I'm all right, so I'm taking the damage from the Juggernaut. Well, wh wh I have not used my Icy because I'm tapped out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is after combat damage. Okay. So uh, I'm taking twelve. And I'm I'm down to twelve. Excuse me. And then I, and then we've got 
my right and then I'm about to gain 10 right hold on five six seven eight nine ten eleven yeah I took 12 and I'm about to gain 10 up to 22 all right okay I was wondering I was wondering if you were gonna ever do that so Yeah, yeah. But, uh, so you're at 22? I'm at 22, yeah. Okay, I'll pass you as far first. Okay, untap. Draw. Uh, volcanic Island. Um, Earth Elemental. And you can go. Four cards. Four cards. And go ahead. And how many cards do you have? I have five. Okay. Okay. Do 25. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Alright. Alright. Puts me down to fifteen. Untap. Draw. Uh, tropical Island. Lightning bolt on your Triskelion. Okay. I'm at thirteen. <clears throat> Um, Jasmine Boreal. Four five. Four five. Yep. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Mm hmm. Gain three twenty eight. Mm-hmm. Colossus? Colossus Astartia. Okay. Tap your Colossus. Armageddon. Okay, uh, so in response, uh, I will take one burn and take it for four. How? It costs eight to activate. Yeah, you can draw a card with your JM day. <clears throat> and then I will play a Taiga and I will say go. 20 cards in your hand? Okay, so you gain 4. Put you at 31. <laughs> yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
Hmm. Been holding out on me. <clears throat> oh. Good call. Um, Aladdin's ring is from Arabian Nights. Uh, yeah, so thank you. Uh, chat, Twitch chat pointed that out. So, uh, um, so while we can't we can't back up any of the damage and stuff like that, the Aladdin's ring can't be in play anymore. Yeah, well, that's all right. Let, let's just keep playing. Let's just keep playing. Okay. Yeah, I didn't even I didn't even think about that. Yeah, with the uh, with the white border, I didn't even I didn't even see. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Uh, untap. Draw. Tiger. Uh, go ahead. You have how many cards in hand? Five. Five. So you gain one. Put you at thirty-two. No, you're you're fine by saying by mentioning that in 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 chat. Yeah, like uh, I mean, because I mean it's an illegal board state, so. <clears throat> Jade statue. Okay. End step. I'm gonna tap your up saying is cool. Untap. Draw. Tigers for days now. Look at that. Did I get rid of a Tiger when I Armageddon? I did. Alright, so there are no more Tigers left in my deck. Um, uh, you can go. How many cards were in your hands? Yeah, I had five cards, I gave one. Okay. Put you at 33. Can't. Arabian Nights. Keep it in your hands. Yep. Untap those that manas. Uh, end step, I will tap the golem. Say go. Cards? Uh, I have five cards. 34. Yep. And step tap your up sign as well. Get rid of Jasmine. Draw. Say go. Cards? Game one? 35? And I'll tap the up sign as goal. I'll Okay. Okay. Untap. Draw. Uh, go ahead. Yep. Yeah, I'll tap a golem. I'll take seven. I'm at three. Untap. There is nothing I can draw here. That is game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, Lands Ring did a lot of work. Uh, I wasn't even. I didn't. I wasn't even uh, thinking that it's an Arabian Nights card because it's white bordered. So. Uh, same as you. Um, I had, I, I did have two Urnum Jins in my hands, but uh, I was also sitting on white cards. So, 
Um, I had I had artifact destruction in my hand that I couldn't cast. Um, right, right, and I was hoping that I was going to be able to draw it, but uh, um, you know, obviously drawing a Hercules Recall when I didn't have any blue sources wouldn't have mattered. So that's why I said there was nothing at that point that I could have drawn. Um, that uh, would have helped because of the fact that uh, uh, I was drawing dead with with the uh, um, uh, with uh, the three tigers on the table. But I mean, I had mana I had mana issues the entire game. Um, I was hoping that that Armageddon was going to hurt you more than it did, obviously. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, just yeah, one of those things. Those yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I figured that you were you're holding on to something. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I wasn't expecting you to be able to go, you know, mox, 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 land, uh, drop another threat or whatever, so. Yeah. But. Yeah. But all right, Rich. All right. Yes. Yeah, 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 it's like, it, it's just, it's weird playing with, with some of the reprints because, you know, you don't even think about it. You know, because the only the only reprint that uh, that doesn't get destroyed is the uh, Arabian Nights Mountain because it was originally printed in Alpha. So, so, so that that's a reprint that that that, that is okay that doesn't die to City in a Bottle. Uh, so, mm -hmm. oh, oh yeah, not a problem. It's, I got it all on stream, and you know, and uh, I mean you've seen it. I've got uh, I got my life counter on the stream. Um, it makes it easy. Um, it's harder in the games when I'm not playing, like when I'm doing commentary and somebody else is playing on my stream because I have brain farts because uh, I don't know which button to press because like n neither one of these is me. So. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Yep, yeah. so. All right, thanks, man. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, and I'm sure that uh, we'll talk uh, soon. All right, take care. Bye. Well, we didn't get there. All right, so, I mean, he's going to concede to me, and my official record will be one and two, but, I mean, we all saw it. We all saw what happened. Um, this was uh, an experiment that uh, went awry, but it was fun to play. I got to play with some, some cards that don't see play very often with the, the Jasmine and the Earth Elemental. Um and, uh, you know, I really like Darabor as a card. It's a really nice splashable card. You know, a 4-4 four, four for 4. You know, the drawback of uh, making the black spells cost 1 black mana more is uh, not a, too much of a drawback in uh, a lot of decks. Um, it wasn't much of a drawback in this deck either because of the fact that the only other black card is um, is Demonic Cure. So, uh, but, I mean, I never really uh, drew that the deck suffered a lot from the wrong half problem which is a problem that a lot of decks have regardless of format where you draw you know a portion of the deck that that uh, doesn't affect the game uh, but if you drew a different portion of the deck uh, you would have been okay um i did have some mana issues in that last game which was rather weird with 30 mana sources but uh it is what it is um, my instincts were correct, thinking that he had the abyss on the in his deck, so uh, the concordant crossroads would have been okay to, to kill the abyss. But uh, you know, all in all, um, I had some fun. It's disappointing to go over three, but uh, it is what it is. So um, thank you for watching my regularly scheduled stream. Again, you can join me every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, where I play three rounds of old school magic. Uh, with the Northern Paladins as part of the Tuesday Night Gauntlet. Uh, join me tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. Eastern, and I will bring you top eight action from the Old School Magic Summer Derby. Seth Roncaroni and Jason Seaman will be battling tomorrow night live on my stream. Uh, Seth is playing with the uh, blue, red, white aggro deck uh, with a splash of black, and uh, Jason is playing uh, Troll Disco. Uh, Jason has already dispatched uh, a deck that was exactly the same as Seth's, so uh, Jason could end up uh, with the win here, but Seth is not someone uh, to be trifled with, not somebody you should count out, so uh, he can definitely pull out the victory. I mean, he um, went 7-1, and one, so uh, um, we will see what happens there. 
Uh, join me on Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern. I will be playing in my final race of the Final Fantasy Randomizer Duckling Derby. I am currently tied for 10th place. My goal at the beginning was to make it into the top 10. Um, in race number one, I ended up in 19th. I started off, I was in like third place going into the final dungeon and then whiffed really hard. Um, I finished eighth in uh, the second race and seventh in uh, the third race last weekend. So I'm looking to get another good quality win so that I can end up in the top 10. All right, so appreciate everybody who joined the stream tonight. Um, hope to see you tomorrow during the Summer Derby stream. Possibly come and uh, see me and cheer me on Sunday night when it comes to uh, Final Fantasy Randomizer. And with that, I will see you next time. Take care. Thank you.